Righto, Titch, when did you first go to sea, mate, and how old were you? 1950. I was 19 then. And what was On your first the 7th ship? of August, the Camellia. Camellia? Yeah. Um, what Mac sort of... McElroy she was. What sort of a ship was she? Coal burner. How do you spell that, Camellia? Uh, K-O-O-M-Y-L-A. Camellia. Right, and um, how many were in the crew on her? Oh, about, I suppose it'd be 40 odd. And you got away as a what? As a, a, a trimmer or trim a sniper, whatever you want to call us in those days. Yeah. Coal trimmer. Right, and what exactly were your job, was your uh, duties with that? Well, you'd assist the firemen in the stoke off when they pulled their fires and yeah. set them away, and then. Um, You'd go into the bunkers and shovel the coal in, down into the chutes for them uh, and make sure that you, you work the whole watch just about in the, in the bunkers. With the exception of the time you were getting rid of the ashes after they yeah. cleaned their fires and that. So that's where you had your bunk set up in the, in the, the bloody bunkers and that you went to sleep in there most of the, yeah, the four hour watch. The day, while yeah. the poor old ABs were working on deck. Yeah, yeah that'd be the day, yeah. <laughs> They didn't, uh, nobody liked um, a, a bad um, relief, of course. You, yeah. You'd get yourself into a lot of trouble if you, yeah. if you didn't uh, do what you were supposed to do, of course. And how many fires in that did she used to have? Well, she only had six. Yeah. And that was three to each fireman. Yeah, right. But that was, um, uh, most of the ships in those days only had, um, had uh, three fires per man, yeah. with the exception of the um, Ulalu, and um, of course she had four fires a man. Yeah, and uh, that was my first firing job. Oh yeah. I had a, a bloke called Paddy O'Brien, who was a, a terrific bloke, uh, but he uh, came to me when I joined the trip, uh, the ship uh, sniping and went to Sydney to Newcastle and um, Paddy came up to me, uh, that one of the firemen paid off Crook and she was a terrible job in the Stogol. And Paddy O'Brien came up to me and said, uh, how'd you like um, um, a promotion before your time? And I was stupid enough to think I was getting <laughs> a promotion, of course. And he uh. said, uh, uh, we can. I'll, I'll have a talk to the chief engineer, and he'll let you in, uh, yeah. and you get um, you become a fireman ahead of time, and uh, and on top of that, you get ten shillings a week extra, which <laughs> <laughs> sounded good at the time yeah. until I got down the Stogold, and believe me, you never seen anything like her. Yeah. She not only had um, like she had eight fires, like four per man, yeah. but. They were big bastards, and everything you did was work in her, and she was hot. Yeah. And we ran to the into the tropics, of course, all the time, and her getting sugar. So. You weren't on her when she hit the cyclone in '54. No, no, you uh, no, no. Yeah, the old man was there. Yeah, then, yeah. I remember. Yeah. yeah. I've seen his um, setup. I was fortunate enough. It was bad enough being. Uh, in the Stoke Old Inner anyway, without yeah. being in something like that. And were all uh, Stoke Olds not the same, all hot and dirty and dusty? No, there were some good jobs, some yeah. light jobs, but um, most of them were, uh, it all depended yeah. a, a lot on whether they were natural draft jobs yeah. or, or uh, horse draft. Yeah. You get some wonderful uh, natural draft jobs, of course, but uh, there was different coals too. If you got a good coal you you it was a cakewalk. Yeah. But if you got dirty coal and companies like the Adelaide Company were never guilty of buying decent coal and <laughs> everything they had was garbage, you know. Yeah. So that made your job harder. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, uh, saying all that about the work <clears throat> I was young and it uh, it didn't matter a, a whole lot, although it was hard at the time yeah. and everything. I, I met some great people in, uh, like great old socialists and everything, and they sit in and talk to you about yeah. things, you know. Yeah. So it was, it was good. In, in and what was the difference between natural and forced draft? Well, 
uh, forced draft, they had a big fan in them. Yeah. And they forced the air into the uh, into the furnace. But in a natural draft job, they had the vents. The air would come yeah. down the vents and, and the fires were, um, the doors were shut on the top, but yeah. the, the ash uh, area was all uh, open. Yeah. And the air used to come up and you'd, you'd fire them differently. Oh. In a forced draft job, you'd open your doors up and, and shovel and fill it right up, you know and then shut the doors and, and open the fan on it and let the fan do the work. But on the other ones you used to, on the natural draft, you'd have to work your fire so as that uh, if you put too much coal in, uh, you just uh, bank at it and it wouldn't yeah. burn, you know. But you, if you fired it light and bright sort of thing, yeah. you'd, uh, depending on the coal too, of course. Yeah. But uh, there was good coal on the coast, but then there was some terrible stuff. Terrible stone. crap yeah. stuff, yeah. You used to have, was it automatic feeds too? Oh yeah, yeah. there was in the iron boats, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. The, and the B class, yeah. yeah. In the iron boats it was all, say, automatic until it got to the ashes, you yeah. had to pull them out that way. But in the B class, you shoveled the coal into a hopper, Yeah. and that was pretty consistent. Uh, yeah, because I was on the... Uh, I think she was the last of the BHP coal burners. It was my first job, the Iron Kimberley. Yeah. And I think she was automatic because you used to have, you could hear yeah. it scream and when it got yeah. a bit of coal caught. Yeah, yeah. coming from the, uh, yeah. yeah, they had big uh, uh, buckets. Yeah. You used to run down under the bunkers and uh, you'd sit there and start it up and you'd fill the hoppers. Yeah. And uh, when they were, were full, it'd start dropping down so you'd shut it off. But oh, yeah. you had to sit there and watch it in case the big cobs of coal would uh, sometimes drop in. Yeah. Because they, they used to burn, um, you know, uh, fine coal. Yeah. And, yeah. and um, what made you go to sea? I come from a seafaring family. Oh, yeah. My great grandfather was um, on a German ship. Yeah. Well, he jumped a German ship in uh, Melbourne. And two uncles were, one of them was in sail. Yeah. And the other one was, um, he went to sea as a deck boy and then went down the Stogol. In the 35 strike, he was uh, pretty active. Him yeah. And two other blokes called um, uh, Mick McDonough and Cabbage Stewart. Yeah. Uh, used to go around and uh, throw the scabs gear over the side. And, <laughs> and pick fights with them and all yeah. that sort of thing, you know. But uh, that, what's his name, Evie Elody, had uh, called him, uh, uh, said he was in a persuasion group. <laughs> so, uh, so he started off all right and then something happened to his brain and he went down below? No, no, he, he saw where the uh, the choices were, you know, where the men were. Yeah, yeah, on deck, that's what I said, he started yeah. off on deck and then had a full frontal no, lobotomy and went he, below. He, he was a good old unionist, uh, yeah. uh, Phil, but a tough old bastard, of course. And, yeah, that, yeah. But uh, and, uh, he, he was, I used to like sitting down and talking to him because he had a million tales yeah. uh, to tell, you know. Yeah. Uh, when, he, when you first went, see, what were conditions like, mate? And, you know, your hours of work and your leave uh, system? It was ratchet. Yeah. You, you did. It, it, um, no less than eight hours, and if they, and of course, uh, if the bunkers weren't running, uh, you did you, deuces all the time, you yeah, know, uh, which lengthened your days, and it was pretty tiring too. The uh, the food, some companies weren't too bad, like McElroy's weren't too bad, but Adelaide Company were. Absolutely terrible. Shit food is eh? It was the, the story going around that the the seagulls used to follow the Adelaide Company ships with a cut lunch. Yeah. Because the <laughs> crew never threw anything over the side. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the, I don't know what they were like on that. The black pans in BHP used to be all right. Oh yeah. Yeah. That yeah, used to be the were, feed yeah. of the day. Yeah. Yeah. On yeah. um, those, what was your length of time you used to get in port for loading and discharging and that? Well, you could be two and three weeks yeah. um, at times, depending on the, the uh, 
how much labour they could get they, they, uh, in the early days, you know. Yeah. But um, you might say, um, you if you went to Fremantle with a full load of, um, of general cargo, you'd be there at least two weeks. Yeah. And then you'd probably go north to um, uh, Geraldton or down to pick up sleepers in Bunbury and Bustleton. Real good trips they were. Yeah. Know? I was in at the coal burners doing that too. I, I thought that was pretty good for a young bloke, you know. <laughs> you get your nights off, or some nights off, you yeah. know. Yeah. You, <clears throat> what were your duties in them days? And as you sort of come up from trimmer to grease or whatever it was, and you know, as it still remained dirt, but that, how did they change over the time? Oh, well, eventually the coal burners went off the coast and yeah. so did all that uh, sort of work. Yeah. But um, in so it, it depended a lot on um, on who was uh, like the deucer or the chief or how your conditions were, you know. But um, most of the time it was hot, dirty work, you know, yeah. just the same. If you're on a an oil burner, um, you know, and you were just looking after the kettle or the, the boiler. Yeah. It was that was pretty easy watch and watch, but uh, then you always had to do work in in the boilers when you're in port and all that yeah. sort of thing, you know. Yeah, cause but, um, it you was, you were probably, I think the, the coal burners were off the coast in about the mid '60s, didn't they? Yeah. I think the Kimberley, if she wasn't the last, and that was in '67, she was very close to the last coal burn. Yeah. Well, the first thing that happened uh, with the down below crowd was when the hand fired jobs went. Yeah. Uh, that put uh, like the old E class and that that put a lot of uh, blokes out of work, and then the the old B class too. You know, they were open fire jobs and that. Yeah. And when they all went, uh, there was the older blokes just went down the gangway and into boarding houses and that, you know. Yeah. They they never had anything like we finished uh, that yeah. with. Yeah. So, but it, in even when things got so much better, you know, in, in motorboats and that, there was bloody hard work in motorboats too. Doing scavengers was a terrible bloody job. Uh, yeah. But. Um, Watch and watch, they weren't too bad at all. Hot, yeah. Of course, but, yeah. But, um, we talked a little bit a uh, while ago about the food and that. How did you find it changed over the years and the companies you went through? Well, um, the union, uh, it appeared, well, we used to complain about it all the time, of course, and it, a lot of it depended on uh, the chief steward, yeah. which was a bad way of doing things and everybody seemed to have a finger in the pie there. Yeah. They were charging the company, uh, the providors were charging the company, uh, um, you know, exorbitant uh, amounts for food and that and so-called good quality and um, an agent told me this, he said, have a look at this, this is first quality, you know. Yeah. Well, the stuff that came on board wasn't anywhere near. Yeah, that's right. Nice quality, yeah. you know, it was a lot of it was junk, and a lot depended on the cook, of course. Yeah. Some of them couldn't care less, uh, but then you get a good cook, and uh, and they they were bloody magic. Some of those blokes, they they'd make uh, bad food into good food. You yeah. know, some do, uh, some a bit tasty. Yes. Yeah. And then you, you get know. the reverse of making good food into yeah, shite. Yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> it was got pure garbage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then then we'd get stuff like ice cream and yeah. that was amazing. Fancy as you did an ice cream on a ship, you Yeah. Know. Of course all that became uh, the way it was. You yeah, know. yeah, that's right, mate, yeah. What did the uh, employer used to provide in the way of, you know, like safe when and safety gear, working gear, tools? Oh well, when I first went to see the uh, everything was uh, the cheapest they could get, the worst soap uh, you've ever seen. The water was garbage on, on the ships anyway. Yeah. You know? And the towels, you couldn't even fit them around your waist. They were that tiny. Yeah. Uh, you 
no washing machines or anything. You scrubbed your clothes on the floor of the uh, uh, the, wa the shower room and things like that. Did them with a deck uh, brush and then. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Then they brought on the old uh, whirly go whirly washing machine. Yeah. If you forgot yeah, about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Different types of ships you've been on, mate. And what was your life like on board them? Well, I, uh, I never wanted to do anything else but go to sea, you yeah. know, and uh, I thought it was, um, you know, it was good being there, but sometimes, of course, it wasn't, you know. Yeah. The, uh, the old coal burners were hard when you were working and everything that, but uh, invariably there was uh, a, a good team of blokes in them, although there were some characters too, of course, yeah. Some of them were pretty amazing there. Particularly on the hard jobs, they'd they'd come back to see after doing their brief, you know. Yeah. And that. But uh, well, let's get into the next question, mate. Some of the characters you've met. We were talking about one just a little while ago. Yeah, yeah, Harry. Yeah, I, yeah Harry wasn't a bad um, ship mate. He had his moments, of course. But yeah, I did over the years. It was. There really was so many of them. Now, as I was saying, yeah. about those old socialists and, and that, you know, that used to sit around and talk about um, um, the, the politics and yeah. everything. Although I knew a bit about politics before I went to see uh, those blokes put me on the right road. Yeah. Or yeah. I think they did in, anyway, you know. Yeah. You're, you're blokes like uh, that. Um, Said his name there for a while back. He uh, he was a walking miller's guide. Cheeky Harry. No, no. no um, what's his name? Um, uh, he come from uh, what do you call it? George? Broken Hill. Oh. Yeah. But um, uh, I, he said to me one time. He, he used to call everybody me boy. You know. Yeah. On the Earl of Lou, this was. He said to me, "Listen, me boy, uh, I've got to go up the road to see the doctor, and uh, my uh, go ashore gear is uh, a bit wrinkly. Would you lend me a pair of pants?" And I said, <laughs> "Yeah." So I gave him a, a pair of pants, and then him being who he was, and me being who I was, like I never asked him where they were when he came back. But about three weeks later, I saw him. He was wearing them down the coat, the stokehold, <laughs> and he'd been standing on them, and yeah. all the heels had been worn out. You know, he, he used to dress himself this way yeah. out of the uh, change room. <laughs> he was a real funny bastard. Yeah, he, he was one of them. What was that story you told us about Cheeky Harry and the mate a while ago? Yeah, well, this is the sort of thing all the old blokes talk about now, and the on the bus trips and uh, the letterboxing trips. Cheeky, um, the mate came down to Cheeky Harry and uh, gave him um, a list when he was boasting on, I think it was an A&L ship. And um, he said, is that all right? And Harry looked at it and he said, uh, yeah, yeah, that's all right, Captain. And he said, I'm not the captain, Harry. And he said, you will be before this gets <laughs> fucking done, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, that'd be right. Any other characters that you, you uh, can remember? Uh, There's another good yeah. idea, I was saying, my second bosun, who you went and seen just not so long ago. Harry McCorrison. Harry McCorrison, yeah. 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 Yeah, Harry is a character, I suppose, yeah. but he's a great bloke, Harry. Yeah, he's a good bloke, mate. Um, a lot of adm admiration for old Harry. Yeah. In your... He hasn't stopped. Yeah. Uh, from the day I met him, uh, working for the union and other people, of course, and yeah. his, and his missus, incidentally, is a is a gem. Shirley. She yeah. had she had thirty odd bloody. Uh, uh, foster kids. Yeah. So um, that's the sort of way that her and Harry uh, have lived, you know, which is... Yeah. I think the majority, if not a lot of them, were all Aboriginal kids, yeah, weren't they? a lot of them were, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, he adopted one son, young Brett, and yeah. a daughter. Yeah. But he's, he, he was, uh, they, and they never got the bell main out of uh, no, that's right. out of Harry. He'll never change. One of Harry's kids is an assistant uh, official in West Australia. Yeah, yeah I Katie. sailed with him too. Yeah, I sailed with both his sons. Oh yeah, yeah I only ever met. I, I knew the kids I think when they were younger. Yeah. But, uh, I haven't seen them for years but Keith I, I've seen him not so long ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, was a, he wasn't a bad shipmate young Keith. In your um, time at sea you would have had some near misses or some bad experiences? Oh yeah, I got blowbacks from yeah. the furnaces a, a few times. One of them was real bad, but um, the others you just get burnt and they don't. They, they just don't take you into port, or they wouldn't in those days. Yeah. You know? Or usually it was in your arms or on the face or something. Yeah. You get over it in a, about a four or five days. Yeah. And what actually happened there? Well, well it was usually in um, in forced draft jobs there was the gas would build if the tubes were dirty or if somebody shame on them yeah the um, the uh, gas would build up in the combustion chamber and because it couldn't get out the tubes it would blow back into the uh, it would ignite and blow back into the um, stoke hole yeah and invariably it was when you were working your fire you know you yeah. you, you might slice it or uh, and um, and the um, the gas would build up straight away and explode while you were hanging off the end of a slice. Yeah. And of course it knocks you out of here. Yeah. But, uh, were there any fatalities or anything like that? Do you ever come across any of that? Not not with their explosions like that, no. but there are plenty of people yeah. killed with steam and you know. Yeah. Same as on deck when they dropping things all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. Different blokes. I, I remember uh, an engineer doing bloody uh, bottom ends, and um, he had his fingers um, in part of the engine, and they dropped the bearing, and, and the full weight of the bearing chopped off all the ends of his t fingers. Yeah. So he was a. That was the sort of thing that could happen. Yeah. People starting the um, turning the engine over while you were doing scavengers was a uh, another rather hazardous thing. It didn't happen very often, but it, yeah. it did happen because in the Doxfords they had opposed pistons, and you would have to crawl into this space and and dig the the carbon out, and you'd fill up a little bucket and then drag it out, and the the uh, it, the space was only about that big. Yeah. You pull it out, and then you and you're crawling over uh, carbon or into it all the time. You know, it wasn't uh, good at all. Yeah. But uh, we, there were uh, accidents, uh, of course, folks uh, getting burnt and like, steam burns and that. Yeah. They were pretty. I reckon they would be, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Um, talking about the uh, ITF's got a bloke in Melbourne at the moment, a foreign seaman. Oh, yeah. He was working on some steam line and they were doing a uh, survey and they, no one bothered checking. He's 75% or maybe even more percent of his body. He'd be in hospital for at least two years, they reckon. Poor bastard. Yeah. You would have uh, had some good times too, mate. Oh yeah, there's no doubt about that. Yeah, yeah. I um, there were a lot of uh, good times as far as I was concerned. I, you know, things that that did uh, happen um, in politics and all that. You know, and the way the the blokes I sail with were were into politics because it's a thing I I'm into. All, I've yeah. always been into. You know. But uh, there were turnouts and all that we used to go to, like in Western Australia, the passenger boats used to have a show ashore, you know. Yeah. And uh, all the crew used to go down there and the local girls and dancing girls. And 
yeah. idea. It was that wasn't uh, too bad, of course. Yeah, yeah. So, what you you on the small coastal passenger ships were? You? I was in the Kalinda. She ran up the um, the west coast. Oh. And the um, and the uh, West Australia. Oh right, yeah. Running east west. They were different. They, they were different ships. You yeah. Know, were, um, the one running up the west coast, we used to work cargo and everything. Yeah. Do all your own maintenance and that, you know. Oh yeah. yeah and the import, but uh, it was all very interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, Seaman Journey in Australia, mate. How did you find that it flu influenced your uh, shipboard life and you know, like the, with uh, the welfare of seamen and that too? And it the was it was great, and yeah. the whole system I thought was was excellent. When I went to sea, there were still common folks and four berth cabins and all that, and and the accommodation stank and everything. Yeah. And uh, it, uh, though I've said. Uh, I was into all this, you know. When you think about it, it was it was pretty rough. Yeah. But uh, over the years, with the you know, we used to have our meetings and people the way, and this was union sanctioned, of course. The way you could talk at a meeting, you know, it was anybody's prerogative to say anything they wanted uh, yeah. to say. It was all fair dinkum, and. Um, well, things like that, and the the, um, the different delegates I saw with they were, they were bloody. Yeah. Some of them were were terrible, of course, and, but most of them, I think, uh, were good blokes who wanted to be uh, delegates. Yeah, I was talking to Tommy Curphy about it a while ago, and he was, you know, but when the new kid had come on, it didn't matter where, where he's down below or on deck, the delegates, when you had a blue, you'd take yeah. them with you if they were interested, yeah. take them with you, and. Uh, Teach them from day one. I had a, I had a, two things happen to me actually. I, um, one was at the seamen's uh, turnout here, and the um, MUA turnout. A young bloke came up to me that I didn't know from, uh, from Adam, you yeah. know, and he said, "Here you go and teach and all this sort of thing, you know." And I said, "I'm good, you know." I said, I'm sorry, but I, I don't remember your name. He said, I was deck boy in such and such a thing. I think it was the Enterprise. Yeah. And he said, uh, you used to talk to me about unions. Well, I, I did too, but that was I used to talk to all the young yeah, folks about yeah. unions. And I had another thing that happened to me. Um, uh, and it, it's funny that this young bloke sat down at a table uh, uh, in a my local pub, I was there with me, missus and some friends who had been there for lunch. And this young bloke came in and sat down and he uh, told my missus a story. He said that um, he joined the ship as a, as a tri-band, you know, yeah. an apprentice. Yeah. Come down from the bush. And he said um, he uh, he had to pay part of his own way and everything and at this stage they'd just come under our wing and the de our delegates, they were supposed to eat in our accommodation and our delegates were supposed to look after them. And yeah. But they still uh, had a cabin in the uh, uh, officers, officers yeah. business, you know. Yeah. Anyway, after he'd been there about six weeks he hadn't been paid or anything. Yeah. And he... Um, he came, he finished up, somebody said to me, that kid hasn't been paid. They haven't even given him his um, travel uh, money. Yeah. So I said to him, come on, well, I had a quickie, like meeting with the blokes that were in the mess. Yeah. I said, well, we'll go and see, I'll go and see the skipper and tell him what we're going to do. So I took him up, took this young bloke up and said uh, to the skipper, now, as you know, this bloke's been um, put under our wing and we're responsible for him. Yeah. And I've just heard that he hasn't been paid his expenses and he hasn't been paid at all. He yeah. hasn't been able to go ashore or anything. And I said, the members have decided that if this kid doesn't get his money straight away, 
we're not coupling up. Yeah. This is on a tanker. You can imagine what that yeah. did. Yeah, shit at the van. Yeah, so he, he was telling my, my missus all this, he said, and in the, later on in the day, there was the you know the louvers at the bottom of the yeah. uh, the door. Oh, yeah. He said an envelope came in there. They <laughs> didn't knock on the door. Yeah. These weak bastards. Yeah. The envelope dropped in to his cabin. Yeah. They had they had a whip around yeah. and got um, uh, his expense money <laughs> and put that in there. Yeah. And then of course they when we got alongside they wanted to know when uh, if we were coupling up. Yeah. We said, well, he's got his, his expenses, are you going to give him his pay? And they said, oh, yeah, that's yeah. fixed, you know. Yeah. And, of course, uh, he, uh, he got paid. Yeah. <laughs> but it, the interesting thing about this young uh, Marty told me later, he said, uh, yeah, that was the reason I joined the Seamen's Union, yeah. was because... Um, he reckoned we were a better class of people <laughs> than they were. <laughs> yeah, right. So he didn't continue on to be a skipper or anything? No, no yeah. he's, a, he's in their union now. Yeah. He lives a, in the next suburb. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 yeah, he's a good bloke too. Yeah. Good kid. And real good unionist too, yeah. of course. Well, that, that get, takes us into the next one. Uh, any more disputes apart from that one there that you've been in? Oh, yeah, we've been. We've had plenty of disputes. Yeah. Uh, over some strange things too, I suppose you, you know, particularly over some of the coal. Yeah. In the old days, but and uh, officers' attitudes too. Uh, you know, you could, they couldn't see the, that the work had, uh, could be done unless they were um, telling you what to do. You know. Yeah. I had one dickhead. Um, uh, one of the engineers was a good friend of mine and he was at, um, at the college with him, you know, with, with another young bloke. And he, he said, uh, this young bloke said, I'm going to join the Enterprise as whatever engineer. Yeah. You know? And uh, this other uh, bloke said to him, well, the, the donkey manina is um, a mate of mine. Um, Go and never talk to him, he'll show you all about the kettle, you yeah. know. Because it was a bastard of a thing, this this boiler they had there. So I I told this young bloke all these things, you know, and of course he was full of himself. Yeah. And the next thing he's trying to tell me what size burners to put in <laughs> and everything, you know. I'd, I'd been yeah. there at that stage about 15, 16 yeah. years, you know. Yeah. But uh, that was... Uh, those yeah. people uh, annoyed me yeah. intensely, you know. The, the same thing happened to me on the Osco Star. First job I had at two o'clock in the morning was learning how to, to do one of the seals on the main pipes. And because the engineers and that weren't up there at the moment time, but he, uh, they showed it to me, uh, it was the bosun there, and I'd showed it to someone else. So same thing, I've showed it to one of the engineers. And five minutes later, he's trying to tell me how to do it. And I said, hang on yeah. a fucking ticket, who do you think showed you in the first place, yeah. you bastard? Yeah. yeah. yeah they they did a lot of that. Yeah. They, uh, I remember one time the uh, that they all for some reason they had to uh, be the star. Yeah. Uh, they were on the Enterprise. They were having fire drill with these old bloody um, this old breathing gear yeah. that they had there, and one of the scaly backs said, "Look, these are no good. You can't fit a helmet on with this." Yeah. Um, Bizzo, you know, with this uh, face thing, and um, then they had to go up and all uh, have a uh, talk fest about yeah. it. This was the way things were going. You yeah. Know. Anyway, um, he, this third mate gets up there and he, they were talking, and uh, he said, "Oh, and there's something else I noticed, Captain. The the helmets won't fit on, and then he looked across, and this bloke uh, stand there looking at yeah. him like this, you know, and he yeah. said, oh, "Well, actually, so and so, you know, That's right. the whole crowd, you yeah. too, yeah. you know." But in, in yeah, uh, that was the, some of the stuff he used to put up with. Yeah. But uh, there were some good blokes amongst them too. Uh, yeah. you, you know, uh, first at yeah, yeah, Jeff. Yeah, he was a yeah. good, he was a yeah. good mate of mine. And I'd never had many mates amongst those people, I yeah. can tell you. 
because they all had that officer yeah. thing, and and it was never in him. He never felt that way at all. Yeah, yeah. Jeffrey. Well, did you ever come across a engineer in BHP, Bobby Hayes? You probably did. And yeah, Bobby was eighth engineer on the Iron Wyndham with us, and we were going ashore one night, and we hear this whistle from a midships. They've called him up. They're waiting. You going? He says, "Ashore with the crew." And they said, "No, you're not." He said, "Yes, I am." And the yeah, next time I seen him, one of our bloody stop work meetings in Melbourne. I'm going, what's a fucking engineer doing at our stopping? And I went across and said, "Oh, how you going? What are you doing?" He says, "Oh, I'm greasing on the air pulse rail." So you know, how come? He said, "Well, after that time in Port Kembla, he said I told him to get stuff. I didn't want to be with them. Yeah. I'd rather go ashore with the boys. Yeah. Now and be with the boys." So yeah. Now, talking, we were talking about the safety issues a while back. It just dawned on me about the. I was in a nine boat in the Monarch one time. The old Monarch? The old, yeah, yeah, the coal burner. Yeah. And um, they were pretty heavy jobs then, but um, we were working in Melbourne in uh, inside the boiler. And um, the third engineer was working on the safety valve. Now, all the safety valves are connected, they yeah. go into one pipe. So. Anyhow, he'd pulled this safety valve out and never put a blank in it. And the um, and the uh, junior engineer and I were sitting in the inside the boiler, uh, taking this uh, strainer it was yeah. out from the uh, top of the boiler, and um, the uh, they stopped the cargo, and the steam built up in the donkey boiler, and um, and the steam blew back into the kettle that we were yeah. uh, we were in. And uh, I used to, I used to have to wriggle and squirm to get in there and out of these bloody manholes, you know. And um, but this, as soon as I, I heard the bang and the steam started coming in, I was out in about a, a jiffy. Yeah. And the engineer was on the other side of the baffle plate. Uh, he, I said to him, "Geez, I got out of there in a in a hurry," and he said. Uh, I thought it took you about half an hour, you know, he, he was the other yeah, side of me. Yeah. But uh, of course this in, the third engineer was in the state then, yeah. he'd nearly cooked both of us. Yeah, you know. yeah. But uh, I, I haven't thought about that for a bloody long time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, we were on disputes or something, weren't we? Yeah. Yeah, so any other jump to mind or? Well, we go on to uh, stop work meetings, we, mate. Oh, they were great. Yeah. Sometimes boring. It all depended, uh, of course. But if if you got uh, Jock Wilkie there, you always knew that the meeting was <laughs> going to be at least half an hour longer. Yeah. Was, yeah. And if you got uh, Jock and Cheeky together. Yeah. Yeah. Arguing the point. Yeah. yeah. But uh, th they were what kept us together, of course. Yeah. The same as the shipboard meetings. Uh, Nobody else, I think, uh, ever did, uh, did things like that. That's why we get so many blokes to our meetings here. Everybody's more or less conditioned to go on and knowing it's not a waste at all. Yeah. Uh, it, it was, it's a good, uh, I, I think they were great. Yeah, no, that's right. Them and the shipboard meetings. Yeah. It's... Because you could, you could discuss anything you wanted to. Yeah. With them. Well, that's the thing. That's where you know the stop what meetings are for. Yeah, yeah, real. It was uh, real democracy. It yeah. Was. Not... yeah, that's true, mate. Yeah. The uh, you tell us how our seamen used to be selected for the jobs in it. Oh, well, uh, by the shape of your head, sometimes in the when I first went to sea, yeah, you'd um, like if you stood for the Orangi. You'd stand in, uh, in in Sydney. You'd stand in two lines, yeah. and they'd walk down and pick out you and you and whoever had arranged the jobs the day before, sort yeah, of thing. Yeah. Or, I remember there was a, a bloke. I can't think of his name now, but the other bloke was Shaky Davis. Um, this other bloke had worked it out that he uh, he worked it out with the bloke who was doing the pickup that he was going to get the job in the Orangi. And the thing was he had to be the first one in the uh, in the line. Yeah. So and he didn't tell any of us, like we were all at the pickup at the same time. And he didn't tell any of us uh, 
about this, but he was yeah. standing there and he waited till the lines had filled. Yeah. And just before the bloke came down, he said, oh, stuff it. And he walked over yeah. and stood at the head of the line. Yeah. And Shaggy said, oh, stuff it, do it. He stood in front of him. <laughs> and Shaggy got the job, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He was the first in the line. Yeah. And, of course, this bloke went off his bloody head yeah, then. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. said, oh, yeah, that, that was my job, you yeah. took, you know. Yeah. But, it, of course, it was too late then. Yeah. But the, uh, the, the best system was... Uh, was our selection. Yeah. And uh, get rid of that bull system. Yeah. Where, the, where our people got the job on the roster. Yeah. It was a, a bit unfortunate if you were on the top and the Iron Baron come in, of course. And <laughs> no you, one else wanted it. Yeah, no one else <laughs> would want it. To, yeah, yeah. And you finished up in it, but yeah. that was just part of the, the yeah. business. What well, they used to say, allocated. I'm more like Shanghai, yeah. allocated, mate, allocated. Allocated, yeah. <laughs> Shanghai. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The uh, well, schedule, so you could, we, we skipped over that a little bit, yeah, and the leave system, that when, when we finally started to get leave and that. Oh, yeah, that yeah. was great, yeah. yeah. Well, that, I was flying home in the end on that BP Enterprise, I was flying home. Um, about every six or seven weeks, you know, yeah. for six or seven weeks. It, it was good. But, and um, Was it, it the it, Enterprise it, that Whiteley was on? Yeah. Yeah, Johnny. Yeah, we were there together. Yeah, I thought so, I, yeah. I was there the day we picked her up yeah. and then left her in Singapore when we handed her over. Yeah, right. Um, and Whiteley did the last trip too, but he was one of the new blokes. He, he joined her about three months after she'd yeah. been on the run. Yeah, he's one of the babies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there was, um, there was Paddy um, Carey, Mick Harrison and me. We are all, uh, all originals. In yeah. Atlanta. Poor old Johnny, he's been gone a while now, hasn't he? Yeah. A couple of years. Yeah, he was a good bloke. Yeah. I still miss John. Yeah. You know, I used to ring him up and and talk politics to him and, and about, you know, who I'd seen and all that. Yeah. And all of a sudden it wasn't there, you know. Yeah, yeah. Same yeah. with old Jeffrey. Yeah, that's true, yeah, yeah. Got uh, photos of John when we did the, uh, put the mast up in the backyard in Coagle. Oh, yeah. John was there giving them head. Kevin Albos and Ronnie Chumley. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Putting the, yeah. The uh, SRF, mate. Magnificent. Yeah. Yeah. As I said before, those old blokes used to go down when the coal burners were going off the coast. They'd go down with everything they owned down the mm. gangway. And generally didn't yeah. last too much yeah. longer. No. Generally didn't last no, too much longer. No, they went longer. into boarding houses and yeah. died and that was it. Yeah. But um, it, it gave us something. It, yeah. It really did. We were uh, uh, we were a mile in front from the start when that uh, that was wonderful the way the officials uh, yeah. negotiated all that too. Yeah, mate. Yeah. And I mean, it, it was wonderful the way things finished up for me anyway. They they had uh, when I first went to see it was you know bad accommodation, bad food, and all that uh, hard work and everything. Yeah. And my last ship the Nervosa, I had a bloody uh, a lounge suite in my cabin, shower and a three-quarter bed, a refrigerator and really good wardrobes and all that sort of thing. It was, you know, it yeah. was amazing, you know. When did you finish up in her? Uh, 71. In the Nervosa? Yeah, uh, 71, 91. 91? Yeah, what happened was uh, uh, we were all set to, to go to that bloody war, you know, yeah. Desert Storm. Yeah. And um, I told my kids I was going, you know, yeah. but I didn't tell me missus. <laughs> and um, as it turned out, she, um, uh, I'd like, 
we were, we'd been over there yeah. and we um, went to Shurmra Beak and Jeddah and places like that and then like, loaded up and we're on our way back and um, of course I rang her up, we used to get a one or two phone calls yeah. and, and rang her up, oh you should have heard her. <laughs> what had happened, she'd rang the company yeah. and they, and um, the, uh, she said, where's the nervosa? And he said, I can't tell you. <laughs> and she said, what do you mean you can't tell me? You know, because they used yeah. to say, oh, she's such and so many yeah. days out of yeah. wherever. And uh, he said, um, I can't tell you, I'm not allowed to. And yeah. she said, has he gone to that bloody war, has he? <laughs> Did he go to the war? And she was going yeah. off and he was yeah. look, Mrs. James, I can't tell you. Yeah. All I know is she's under British orders yeah. and all this, you know. Yeah. So uh, he, uh, he, could he couldn't actually yeah. say that, but she walked up the street yeah. then and she said to the greengrocer, yeah. did you know he was going to that <laughs> war? <laughs> so that put paid your sea going career, yeah, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. No, well, I did yeah. one more trip after yeah, that, right, but that, yeah. that was it, yeah. 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 We never got into any trouble at all up there. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The, the Yanks had frightened shit out of you, of course, because yeah. they'd, they'd fly you up to you at sea level, yeah. and then when they got a few hundred yards away, they'd go up and over, you know, yeah. not over the deck, but alongside yeah. you. Yeah. And they were those jet planes, and they'd roar like yeah. bloody hell, you know. Yeah. And if you, when we were working on deck, doing uh, winches, you know, working on stuff, yeah. uh, uh, you, everything would be nice and quiet and then all of a sudden this bloody bang as yeah. they went over, you know. They'd frighten the shit out of you, yeah. yeah. And then the yeah. French come along one night and uh, we were, had all the lights out going up past Yemen because yeah. they were on the same side as, uh, what's your name, Azan. Yeah, Saddam Azan, yeah. And, uh, they, we had all, we were all shut down except for navigate yeah. and lights, you know. And uh, the French came along in a destroyer and, and sent a helicopter up to see who we were yeah. and lit us up like a crystal palace. They <laughs> put these big lights on there, yeah. you know, yeah. and the whole ship was uh, lit, lit up. up then. So yeah. there had there been anybody uh, ashore wondering where we were, they, yeah, they, they down, wouldn't yeah. have had any trouble, of course, <laughs> finding us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that answers part of the next question too. How did it affect your family life going to sea? Oh, well, it wasn't good for the kids. Yeah. Got a, wasn't good for me missus either, of course. Especially not after that. <laughs> no, no, she was mother and yeah. father all yeah. those years. But the leave system made a difference. Yeah. When I'd be home for three months and then away for three months, you know, yeah. they, or six weeks, you know, three months on the Navosa. Yeah. Uh, six weeks on the uh, on the enterprise. Yeah, that that did make a difference. Yeah, yeah uh, not true. many people were able to spend all that time with their kids. You know. Yeah. Uh, six, at six weeks at a time. You know. Yeah. yeah. And then of course I used to phone up, uh, and keep in touch with them that way. Yeah. But it was it was definitely hard on on my missus. Yeah. Yeah. As it would be with all seamen's uh, wife. Yeah, it seems to be, yeah. It's a, as Tommy said, he said, uh, when I asked him the same question, he said, well, there's two divorces answer it for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. so it's all, you know. The, um, what, what are you, uh, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself there. The seamen's SUA school, do you ever have the chance to go to it? No. Down at St George's Bay? I have been down there. Yeah. I went down there for a function one yeah. time, yeah. What do you think yeah, of I was area? pretty impressed with it. Yeah, it's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. My word, it is. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good area down there. Yeah, I, I had the good fortune of going down with Bodnam and, and people like that. Yeah. You know. We took a bus down Brennan. He was he was yeah. there, and, and all those old heads were there too. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So Billy well, Bunker I, and all that. Yeah, yeah, I enjoyed the the uh, the day. Yeah. And I, as I say, I was impressed with the with the place too. It, it was great. Yeah, it came up all right, didn't it? Mm. Well, since you've retired, mate, what are you doing these days? You're still active in the industry of the oh, union? Or? I, with the um, vets, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and they're a great team of people, let me tell you. Yeah. 
when I'll just tell you when um, when um, young Shane got crook, you know, yeah, there was added expenses and all that sort of thing, and uh, things got pretty rough uh, for a, a while there, and uh, these um, I never said any anything to any about people, of course, but uh, they obviously had their their ear to the death yeah. because uh, um, my old bus was packing up and I, you know, I was things were going downhill, yeah. you know. Yeah. And then, uh, as it uh, turned out, they run a function for me. Oh, that's good, yeah. And they finished up. They bought my car for me and plus a few extras. So you, you know. haven't got the bus no more? No, no, the bus <laughs> packed up 350,000 yeah. k's, it was yeah. entitled to, you know. <laughs> but I went and yeah. bought this this little car, yeah. so I'm as happy as a pig in shit with, the, yeah. with my blokes, I tell you. That yeah. There isn't a better organisation uh, yeah. than the Maritime Vets in Newcastle, oh, let me tell you. Yeah. Their meetings are run like our meetings always were. Yeah. And uh, they're a concerned mob of people too. They yeah, that's right. And we got the miners in with us too. You yeah, know, that's they good, yeah. they come to our meetings too. Yeah. And uh, I made some good friends there. Yeah. So I met some marvellous people amongst those old miners. Yeah. yeah. But this organisation, I hope it stays like this forever. Yeah. Because uh, if there's anything old blokes need, it's somebody to. Yeah. Uh, to talk to. A lot of blokes, of course, don't turn up, you yeah. know, they've just gone their own way and that's it. Yeah. And yeah. I honestly believe they're missing something. Yeah, yeah. Because it is good to come and, uh, yeah. and talk to.